Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all have had a great Saturday, a great start to your weekend. We're going to continue to break down the tropics in these videos. I made a video this morning breaking down the model runs from overnight into this morning. Well, things have since changed a little bit. There's been some continued model madness, if you will. And we're going to break down what we know in this video on these three areas of interest right here. They're still tagged by the National Hurricane Center. And we're going to break down what we know about them. This middle storm was getting the most interest overnight, and now there's a little bit of interest on this storm. Uh, 92L, what's left of it from the, the most furthest east storm, if you will, um, it's not getting a lot of attention anymore on model guidance, and it's continuing to drop off. But we're going to break down what we know. We're going to run through the GFS, the Euro, the ICOM model, the Canadian model. Um, we're going to take a closer look at the promoting and limiting factors that these... Um, systems have and the chances of them developing long term and any kind of threats down the road. Uh, so stick with me in this video because we're going to get really detailed. So I know that a lot of people just want to see hear the cut and dry information. If, if that's the case, that's totally cool. But if you really want to know what's going on in the environment out here um, on these systems and uh, we're also going to break down MJO phasing and talk about what phase we kind of need and what phase we're in right now. Uh, for tropical development, for promoting tropical development, if you will. So um, definitely stick with me. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video, but stick with me. I'm going to get you all some good information here. If you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. I upload content daily and sometimes twice a day, like today. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. And uh, y'all's support is always amazing. Thank y'all. Um, y'all give me an audience to talk about what I love, which is the weather. So I appreciate the ongoing support y'all give me. I've had a lot of growth over the last few days. So thank y'all. And um, just I appreciate it. I always want to show y'all love with that. Y'all are like a family to me. So thank y'all. So let's get going here. So like I said, three areas of interest. It looks like a bunch of slop out there right now. We're going to talk about why here in a second. It all has to do, not all, but it has a, little, a good bit to do with what you call a monsoon trough. And uh, it's really intact out here. You need this thing to break down a little bit so you can get individual vortices, if you will, to really find a discrete storm that the models want to latch onto. And ultimately, not just the models, but in reality for one of these storms to get going here. So we're going to take a, a closer look to basically two out of three of these storms and to the two most western storms. First off, you have this storm right here. And uh, that's actually not have been tagged as any kind of invest right now. Then you have this little bit of a naked swirl right here. You have like a low level, uh, low level spin, and that's about it. There's not really any kind of big time convective explosions and stuff, except kind of right here, where there's a little bit of moist air. There's a good bit of dry air right in here that's kind of limiting any big time development. But models have kind of latched onto this, and it looks like the healthiest wave right now, the furthest most east wave. This has been tagged as 93L. You still got 92L back here. But as we're getting going here, we got the latest 8 p.m. update. Not many, as far as chances, things have not changed as far as the five-day outlook here. Uh, still a 40% chance of this middle one to develop that upgraded to this uh, later, this earlier this morning. Um, I have a feeling this would have upgraded to a 50% chance if model guidance would have kept um, selling on this developing. But they kind of dropped off this evening, and I'll break that down here in a second. It's starting to show this one a little bit more love. So... Uh, this little 20% chance, I think this is going to go away completely sooner, but there's still three areas of interest. And, and I think this first wave has a chance to develop also. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the latest GFS. So we're going to break this thing down here. Well, first of all, what I want to show you is this is pretty much dry air, the brown, the green is moist air. And so what we have here is we back it up a little bit. We have these tropical disturbances right in here, kind of like a conveyor belt of moisture, but there's a lot of dry air. <clears throat> excuse me, on top of the northern end of these storms, especially the, the two right over here. This one's kind of dying out, but there's another storm, not technically a tropical wave or influx of moisture, if you will, disturbances along the monsoon trough. They're just dealing with a good bit of dry air here. There's also unfavorable conditions right here, which we will talk about in this video. So we look at the latest GFS. We'll break this down for you guys. Um, actually, Actually, what I'm going to show you here first, I forgot, is the 12Z GFS. So this is the one from lunchtime. What I want to show you here is we're moving forward. We got three areas. We got this area, this area, and, and this area. And you're going to see periodic, periodically, as I'm flipping through here, if you want to try to know what day we're at, we're at Monday, August 9th. And periodically here, we're, you're going to see an L pop up where it thinks maybe a, some kind of system can begin to strengthen. But as we get going through here in time, 
I'm pushing zero instead of the key. Uh, it takes the middle one, just like the previous two runs prior to that. Takes the middle storm, strengthens it as it kind of gets into Barbados and the Lesser Antilles. Takes it the more southern route, which actually trends south from the two runs previous to this. This is just one run, by the way. One run. Takes it through the Caribbean islands, uh, strengthens it into a hurricane, probably briefly, and then recurves it, strengthens it, and then flirts with the east coast and then heads out by, uh, heck, not next weekend, but this will be the weekend after next. So this is about two weeks out. So pretty far out. Meanwhile, it doesn't really do any of those storms. You look at the latest GFS. One thing I want to mention before we get deep into this is the tropical Atlantic is very marginal right now. And mar marginal as in a development you got marginal conditions, is what I'm trying to say. So it's like you're trying to, it's like you're trying to get a lot out of something very small, if you will. And uh, really, the real favorable conditions haven't quite moved into the tropical Atlantic yet. But moving forward, this is the latest GFS. Now check it out. We get into Monday, and it it actually pops a low pressure off on this storm. Um, this is the first storm, and it doesn't show the second wave any love anymore after the last three runs did. This is how flip-floppy these models are. Um, and it takes it into the Lesser Antilles, into the Caribbean islands. Um, as just kind of a weak tropical wave, and it interacts with land, probably weakens. And then it gets off the coast of uh, East Florida, Eastern Florida, and redevelops again around this time next, next weekend, so around next Saturday. And develops into a tropical system, has it kind of into the armpit of the southeast and kind of just gets stuck there and then, you know, flirts around there early next week and uh, eventually begins to strengthen into a tropical system and then moves on out. So we're going to be talking about these systems for a while um, if the GFS scenarios come true. Now, you look at the latest GF, GFS ensembles, GEFS, it, sure enough, you know, there's not a strong signal anywhere. Um, that's the first wave, that's the second wave, but you don't really see a super consolidated strong signal anywhere. You really don't. Now you look at the European. Let me mention the European. The European has held strong. It has not budged. It is. It has been pretty sloppy with these systems the whole time. It has not been showing these systems much love at all. The European might be on to something. It really, it really could be. Um, this could be a big win for the European model, which it gets a lot of wins anyways all the time. It takes all the systems as you get into early next week into midway next week, and you, you notice you don't see anything. It basically takes the, the second one right here, and it has it a tropical wave, and it kind of brings some tropical moisture into the Bahamas, into the southeast, and then that's it. It doesn't have any any kind of tropical development. Now, you get pretty far out, like eight to nine days, it takes gets a tropical wave off North Africa. But it's really too far out to really even talk about that. And the EPS ensembles reflect that. There's nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm going through the entire run. I'm getting into next weekend. I mean, there's hardly nothing. I mean, there's like one or two little runs that, that kind of get into the southeast, but that's it. Um, so there's not really much going on. Now, you look at the EPS ensembles as far as probability of a tropical depression developing. There's a good chance. Um, and it won't take much to get one of these to become a tropical depression. But for them to get one to become a storm... That's going to be a different story. It's going to be really interesting. I could see us getting through all this and not even having a name storm out of any of them. But I could definitely see one of them branching off, being the more dominating storm, and really forming into its own kind of storm and being fret, if you will. I don't see there being two storms. Somebody commented that in the comments a little earlier. You know, what's the chances of all three of them developing? Uh, pretty close to zero. There's going to either be one dominant storm or either there's not going to be any. This is the latest icon and rolling through here we're getting into Sunday morning. And the icon does a good job of showing an L in every area of interest. <clears throat> now going forward here um, it, it kind of flirts back and forth and puts an L here, L here, L there. But the icon now um, which showed this also earlier takes that first wave he brings it into the Lesser Antilles, gets it into Puerto Rico, gets into basically into the Caribbean islands, and uh, as maybe a weak tropical storm, and uh, really sends it into the Caribbean islands um, as a system. But then again, you know, 
It's rolling over land masses. It's really hard to figure out what's going to happen. But the Icon kind of likes what the GFS is doing too, which the Icon showed this earlier when the GFS wasn't. And the Icon likes the first system. This would be the first system. And this is getting into Thursday of this coming week. Um, you have a low-end tropical storm or a tropical depression run to the Bahamas, uh, maybe eyeing the southeast. It's going to be interesting. There's some very warm waters in here. So there's going to be a little bit of shear right into here, and I'll show you all that in a second. But um, the Canadian model, you know, the Canadian model hasn't hasn't liked tropical development at all, really. Um, moving forward, it pops up an L uh, occasionally. The Canadian model doesn't really buy any of it. So this is Invest 93L. This is the middle storm. It has dubbed it an Invest. You know, you notice a little bit of low-level circulation right into here. Um, but it is labeled an invest. It doesn't look healthy. Um, there's a, a very visible low-level swirl, which tells us that it's got some circulation to it, but uh, it doesn't look pretty, which is expected. You look at the latest model intensity for that swirl, and the models that do have it developing, the models that do have it developing have it getting, some of them, all of them, have it getting pretty strong into hurricane status. So it'll be interesting. Um, but that's if it develops. So I want to talk about the monsoon trough. So we're going to talk about the factors in place here. Um, this is the monsoon trough. You notice here, um, the latest GFS, you see just a bunch of energy. And a couple vortices are trying to get branch off and do their own thing. Um, but not really, you know. And, and you know, you, the thing with the monsoon trough is, is when it's really intact, Basically, these tropical waves that are out there are almost just like convect, just thunder, a bunch of a, a bunch of areas of thunderstorms. They're not even like tropical waves. They're just uh, convective explosions, if you will, in this trough. And really, unless you get one of them to the monsoon trough to break down a little bit, if you will, um, it's kind of hard to explain. <clears throat> then you're not going to get one of these vortices to really consolidate and kind of become its own, if you will, if you know what I mean. So you look at the dry air in place, there is a nice conveyor belt of moisture out here, but there's still a good bit of dry air. Um, and you notice even the latest GFS, dry air gets wrapped up into the circulation of the first wave that the GFS is now showing that can develop. And uh, there's a lot of dry air just getting wrapped into it. Um, so, you know, dry air is a factor. Um, you look at this right here. Um, this is what I kind of been mentioned briefly in the video. There's almost like a little upper level low feature right here, like a tut almost, um, that if anything does get the northeast of the Caribbean islands, it's going to have to interact with that, which until would create shear. And here it is. There's higher shear right here. So, even if one of these do finally break off, become its own, and heads up this way, which I think if anything does develop will, it'll head kind of in this area, it's going to have to encounter some shear. So if you have a weaker storm, a weaker storm is going to struggle with moderate shear. If you have a stronger storm, it can hold its own a little bit more. So it's a battle for these, these, little, these little boogers out here. It really is. Now, um... Every time I try to bring up Twitter in my videos, it is extremely slow. So y'all, um, y'all, um, hold tight for me here in a second. I'm going to try to bring this up. But um, there's a guy named Eric Webb, that very intelligent guy. He's like freaking next level intelligent, like a like a rocket scientist when it comes to the weather world. But he created these graphs. Well, he kind of made them into their own, if you will. And this is MJO phasing. So oh man, here we go. So. Let's, let's let this load for a second, but we're going to flip here and let it load, and I'll just talk to you all for a second. But this guy, he's really smart. His name's Eric Webb, and he's uh, he's definitely one of the smarter, smarter minds in the weather community right now. And uh, I'm trying to figure out if this will load for me. But um, I swear, it never fails. Every time I try to bring up a graphic on Twitter, if I don't show the actual tab enough attention for long enough, it becomes a pain to pull up, but it's pulling up for me here. This is him on Twitter. By the way, if you guys are not following me on Twitter, definitely hit me up on Twitter. I, inter I can interact with people a lot more on Twitter than I can in the comments. It's much easier. Here you go. So basically the browns you see, it might be a little small on your screen, is sinking air. The greens, 
or more favorable MJOs, those are rising air. So when you have sinking air kind of over the, um, basically the Atlantic, you have rising air over the Indian Ocean and areas of the Pacific. So one thing I do want to mention, normally when the Eastern Pacific is very active, the Atlantic a lot of times is, is not active. It's very stable. Um, and right now the Pacific is very active. It's very active. There's a lot of there's a Kelvin wave going through it, and it's very, very active. Um, so anything that is developing right now in the tropics, it's kind of like an uphill battle in the first place. But you move, and these are different phases. You get into phase six. Um, the favorable uh, phase starts to move deeper into the Pacific and gets into the eastern Pacific. And then this sinking air begins to shift more over Africa into areas in the Indian Ocean. So... A, a good point to know is basically, and we'll go on and get to phase eight. When you get into phase eight, MJO phase eight, that is the most basically favorable time for tropical development. That's when you have sinking air over the Indian Ocean and you have rising air over the, still over areas of the Pacific, but it starts to move over the Atlantic. As you can tell down here, that's when you have favorable conditions for tropical development. So, um, right now, the favorable conditions are still actually over areas of Indonesia and the Indian Ocean and the basically most a good chunk of the Eastern Pacific. So there's still a lot to figure out. There's a lot we're going to continue to talk about. Thank you all for uh, watching this video. Hope it helped you out some. Um, and we're going to continue to have a breakdown of this. So thank you all for the amazing support. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday evening.